So now we're going to depart. Now to depart, is, is this green light is flashing. It won't let me depart. So I have to get a steady green. And I use that. Now we can depart. And now we're departing. There you go. How long have you been a trim operator for? Uh, not that long. 48 years. I started on the original trim. This isn't the original trim. It was 1976, and I started on that, and 34 years later, they demoed that and built this. My name is Greg Paravide, and I'm a tram operator at the Roosevelt Island Tramway. Okay, thank you. This is the first commuter tram ever built. Prior to that, there were amusement parks, which they still are. We cut down traffic. We're up in the air. So people use this instead of their cars. We can even help out the subway. Secondly, it's the only tram in New York, so that's unique in itself. My name is Gary Bristel, and I am a supervisor here at the Roosevelt Island Tramway, and I am responsible for the day-to-day -day operations, safety, security, and everyone's enjoyment. <laughs> you get people from all over the world who come and visit here, and you really see a lot of people who have a passion for things like this, whether they're used to being in the slopes and skiing and used to cable car transportation, or if they're just generally interested in mechanics. Being in the middle of New York City, one of the design features was comfort. It's not your typical cable transportation, and that was taken into consideration when the tram was built. The Roosevelt Island Tramway has two track ropes per cabin, and the spread on them is much wider than your typical cable car, so it's actually a very smooth operation. Many people might not even think of this, but the tram is strong enough to hold a car and bring it across the river if you were to able to fit it inside. Maximal occupancy on the cabin is 109 people plus the operator, so 110 people altogether. Our peak hours, Monday through Friday, are going to be 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then again from 3 p.m. till 8 p.m. and then over the weekends, 6 a.m. up until 3.30 in the morning. In its maximum capacity, a cabin will move back and forth 172 times. A day? A day. We don't sleep, not here. There's a psychologist that comes here and she brings her patient. Usually they'll sit on the bench in Manhattan Station and I'll open the doors and they'll just, they'll, she'll just let them walk through and walk out, sit down and I'll make a trip. And around the third time she comes, they're actually on the cabin and we'll make a trip over. And believe it or not, it works. You can tell that they're, they're a little bit hesitant to get on the cabin and they'll, they'll probably stand outside the door and say, uh, uh, how high does it go? How long is the trip? Is it scary? Is it smooth? Usually, and it's happened, I usually sit them down and hold their hand for the entire trip. And I just say, look at me. Don't look outside. Everything's fine. I've talked to them. It's a four and a half minute trip, so I can talk for four and a half minutes. A lot of other questions about the tram is, does it run in the wind? And the old tram, we used to shut down at 40 mile an hour winds. 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And again, the trams were attached to each other at that time. So if one got stuck, the other one got stuck too. And it was a malfunction with the system. They were stuck for 15 hours. We had to bring people up in a separate car, which we had, it was a cage, and 15 people can fit in it. We took the windows out. People had to climb on the bench into the cabin, and we brought it down with a diesel engine. Got every, nobody got hurt, everybody got rescued. That's why they built this. This one has so many backup systems. This particular dram can run up to 60 mile an hour winds, which we never get in New York. We usually at about 50 max. In addition to that, we run in the rain, we're running the snow, but we won't run in lightning. If ice forms on the cable, when we move the cabin, the cabin crushes the ice. You can actually hear it hit the roof. Yes, you have to go out and go to your right. Swipe your card again. Oh, I get to see people from all over the world every day. It's the only tram in New York, so it's uh, that's unique in itself. I got an interesting story for you. The manager called me and says, listen, we're training a new person, so we want you to train him. I said, all right. So the young fella that's on the cabin, and we're alone just as we are now. And I'm going through the motions and explaining things. And he says, uh, you know, I know you and you just don't remember me. And I said, excuse me? He said, 18 years ago, my mother got on the cab and she was pregnant and she had to get to the hospital. And you made a special trip for her to get her to the hospital and had the ambulance waiting there. He says, I'm the child that was born. Now I'm training him. How about that? And he still works here. 
Favorite thing about the tram is probably how iconic it is to Manhattan and, and really to Roosevelt Island and how it's become such a great resource for the community to use as mass transit. So I know a lot of times tourists will visit the island to ride the tram, but it really also serves as a primary resource for the island residents to get in and out of Manhattan quickly. We have approximately 12,000 residents on the island. From tip to tip, it's about two miles and it's about 800 feet in its widest point, so it's uh, relatively small. <laughs> we usually attract thousands of visitors to the island weekly, monthly, and really over the course of a year, millions that come to visit the island. The island has some of the wildest history in New York, and it's also such a green, serene, quiet place where you can come and visit and, and take everything in. So I definitely think it's, it's one of the most iconic places in Manhattan. Starting at the south end of the island, we have Four Freedoms Park, then working your way up a little bit, we have the Hope Memorial and then Smallpox Hospital, as well as Blackwell House. And then on the northern end of the island, we have the Nellie Bly Monument. Nellie Bly was a reporter and she came to the island to investigate the mishappenings that were occurring at the hospital here. The Girl Puzzle really reflects the nature of Nellie Bly's work and really bringing to light how mistreatment of the underserved community and women in particular was really brought to the forefront and there were a lot of changes that happened because of that. We do have a lot of cats on the island. We have a wildlife foundation that helps to manage and, and service the population but they also service the other wildlife that we have on the island. I would definitely bring people here. I mean I think it's a uh, it's really such a fun, unique spot in Manhattan to get away from the hustle and bustle and be able to walk, you know, grab a cup of coffee from the middle of the island and really just enjoy Manhattan from the side angle. We have a range of all ages of people who really enjoy it. Little kids love the view. Well, that's what I enjoy the most about the jam is people's enthusiasm to be here. The views you're going to get from the cabin are unlike anywhere else in New York City. If it was up to me, I would ride the cabin twice a day, and that would be heading east towards Roosevelt Island first thing in the morning when the sun is rising, and heading west into Manhattan when the sun is setting. It's actually meeting people. I talk all day, and people have questions about the tram, about New York. Plus, it's a beautiful view of the city, uh, and it changes every year. When I started back in 1976, none of these buildings were here. And as you can see, the skyscraper is getting taller and taller, and uh, it's just a nice job.